when we're talking about comfort measures in labor, it's important to understand what pain we're having when we are in labor and how to be able to then comfort those pains in labor. So the first thing that's happening is you've got your uterine muscle, it's contracting. Your uterus gets hard and tight, just like when you're doing a bicep, the gym gets hard and all the blood is pushed out of that uterine muscle or the majority of it. And that uterus is working really hard. The second thing that's happening is you've got this stretching of the lower uterine area and your cervix is being stretched and pulled. It's got to be able to pull open. The other thing that's happening is when you go into second stage, you start to feel the head coming down onto the vaginal area and it's pushing down into the bones of your pelvis and down onto your perineal floor. And again, more stretching, pulling, lots of sensations happening from baby's head and body as it's moving down the birth canal. And then while you're having these uterine tightenings, they happen for quite a prolonged period of time. And the more that you work that uterine muscle, just like that bicep at the gym, the more tired it gets and the more pain you feel as the labor contractions continue. We think about pain, P-A-I-N. Pain has a purpose. We can anticipate it. We know that it's gonna happen. We also know that it's not going to be constant in labor. It'll just be intermittent. Not like other painful stimuli that happens when we say stub our toe or break a bone. And then we just need to know that it's normal. Pain in labor is something that your body needs in order to help send all those important signals for all those important cascade of hormones that need to happen in order for your baby to come out. And it's completely normal. But the question is, what do we do about it? Something I wanna to talk to you about is this gate control theory. Gate control theory comes into play when we're thinking about our brain and the stimuli that enters our brain. So you've got this painful stimuli, you've got this non-painful stimuli, and it's important for your brain to be able to find this balance. One of the things that you can do is to help your brain have a balance of those different stimuli coming into it. So if you're having quite a bit of pain with your contractions, one of the things you can do is try hot shower, warm water, that sort of stuff. I'll go into more detail about that later. But to be able to bring that non-painful stimuli also to your brain so that it can have more of a balance instead of just feeling lots of painful stimuli, help you bring it up so that it all comes back down. And this way, it will help you to mitigate all of that pain that you're feeling in the early parts of labor, which for some can be quite long. For others, it's not as long, but being able to find that balance so that you're able to emotionally and mentally and physically cope with what you're feeling in the early labor and the second part of labor will really help you to get to the goal that you're wanting to have at the end. So one of the things that I like to think about when you're preparing yourself for having a baby and going into labor, think of it as a marathon, which it is, that you're about to run. What would you do to prepare yourself for that? Well, you'd train, right? You'd make a plan. You'd think about how long is my race? What do I need to do to get to the end of that race? Where are the markers? At what point do I need to stop and take a break? Pace yourself, right? You'd be prepared with drinks. You'd be prepared with food for nourishment to keep your muscles going, keep your body strong. You'd be prepared with support people on the sideline who is gonna give you those drinks and those foods and then they'd give you those words of pumping you up to get you mentally to keep going, right? Those are really important things to think about for labor as well. You basically are planning, how do you take care of yourself to be able to get to the end of that race? So you would have your tools ready for yourself to be able to support yourself all the way through. And as I said, there's things like your food, your water, your nourishment, your support team, those words of affirmation and confirmation to help you to be able to get to the end. And last but not least, you would do everything that you could to mentally stay focused on your goal at the end and how to get there while enjoying yourself. So we've talked about a few things so far when preparing for labor. One of the important things is having a labor support team, whether that's a partner, whether that's a, a family member who's had babies before, whether that's a doula who is a professional in supporting women through labor. You decide that who you can be the most vulnerable with who you can be yourself and not have to worry about what are they thinking about me. That's a really important part of determining who you have with you and who do you feel safe with being really you. One of the reasons for this is because studies have shown that women that have a good support team in labor experience less pain in labor. 
they have shorter labors, they use less pain medication in labor, and they report having a more positive experience in labor. An important piece for preparing for this marathon of labor is what do you have in your bag of tricks to be able to prepare yourself to continue to get through those milestones that you've set. Who's gonna be giving you that water? Are you gonna drink water? Do you want water? Are you gonna want something cold and icy? Are you gonna want something sweet? Or do you just really want a warm drink to make you feel nice and cozy inside? These are important things to consider. One thing that I strongly recommend, chapstick. As crazy as that sounds, your lips are gonna get dry. You're gonna to forget to drink. Someone's gonna to forget to give you water. You're gonna be breathing in and out of your mouth. You're gonna be working really hard. You're gonna get a bit dehydrated at some point and you're gonna want that chapstick. Some people will use a tennis ball, they'll use an exercise ball, they'll have music that they listen to. Some people use those hypnobaby or hypnobirthing pre-recorded meditations in order to be able to refocus their mind from here to the meditation recording that they're listening to. Make a playlist. I've seen mums have calm, quiet, soothing, relaxing music that helps them to zen and zone out. And I've had mums have some pretty upbeat dancing exciting music that helps to lift their spirits, and I've even heard rock and roll and heavy metal in labor. Others really feel that it's important that they have some good massage on their low back, or their upper shoulders, or their temples, or along their head. Some people find that warm water from a hot shower or from a warm bath will help them to feel more relaxed and comfortable in labor. Both are good to try. Think about a nice hot tub after you've had a big workout session and you climb into that hot tub and you just kind of melt in that and you relax and your muscles say thank you. Um, some of the other things are TENS machines. You can, you can get those on Amazon for not very much money. It doesn't have to be the expensive Dr. Hose. There's some at some of the local stores here in town that sell them and you can try the Dr. Hose as well. What that does is it helps to mitigate those neurotransmitters that are going from the lower part of your body up to the brain. So when we think about that gait theory we were talking about before to try and change that sensation going into your brain for the painful and the non-painful stimuli, the TENS machine can help to mitigate that. Lots of people find those to be a valuable tool to be able to get through the first part of labor. Remember, think about having a camera, well, or your phone. Everyone's got a camera on their phone these days. Make sure that not just you have something for going into the water, but your partner does too, or whoever's gonna be your support person so that you can comfortably get into the water, into the shower or the tub, and then be able to have that support person there with you to keep giving you that massage that you were getting them to give you in order to be able to have two at once. That feels great. You wanna have as many options available to you if one thing starts to lose its effect and leave you feeling that you need something else in order to help you get to that next milestone. So we talked about a few things already. I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail about some of these things that you can have and why you should use them. Massage. Anybody had a massage before? It's fantastic, right? It feels great. Sometimes it's a little bit uncomfortable, but we enjoy it because we know that that little bit of uncomfortable will lead to a lot of really good comfortable. But for the most part, massage feels good. It's relaxing to your muscles. It helps to be able to increase that non-painful stimuli to your brain to help to mitigate the painful stimuli that you're having. And it just feels good. You feel close to someone when they're, particularly your partner, when they're giving you a massage. It helps to bring your body into a nice relaxed state and be able to focus on that instead of focusing on the pain that you're having. When you're able to take your focus off of that pain and enjoy that muscle relaxation, it can help to lower your stress levels as well. One of the things that we think about with pain is you start to anticipate that pain. And so then that pain becomes more of a fear-induced pain. And then your pain, when you feel it, you feel it even more so when you anticipate it because you're now you're tense and you're stressed about it. So if you can redirect that thought into something more relaxing, help to get rid of that stress, then when that pain does come, it's not so overwhelming and it's not so consuming because it's all you can think about. Massage, physical touch, it's a nice, tangible, non-painful stimuli that your brain can focus on and really help to distract you from that painful stimuli coming from your uterus. So earlier I sort of touched a little bit on being able to use an exercise ball or getting in the shower or moving around. Position changes, those are really important because again, they are something that's going to help to distract you from what you're feeling. 
We're never gonna be able to completely get rid of those pain sensations, but the goal here is to be able to, back to the gait theory, reduce that non-painful stimuli input so that your body isn't feeling that painful stimuli input as much as it would be if we weren't doing things to change that. Position changes are really important because you're using your whole body to be able to distract yourself from the pain that you're feeling down here. The other part of position changes is sometimes that pain that you're feeling is actually because baby might be in a funny position that's just putting more pressure and more pain into one area than another. So we move around and it helps to get baby into a better position, it takes the pain off of one area and helps to shift it to distribute it more evenly throughout your pelvic area and your vaginal area. So back to being able to use the exercise ball, you can sit on the exercise ball just comfortably. You can sit on the exercise ball and lean forward onto the bed. You can bounce around on the ball. You can get up, walk around. You can get into the shower. You can sit on the chair, turn around backwards on the shower. Put your foot up. Try whatever feels good to your body. Just keep moving. That movement will help to sway baby and just help that head come down and nuzzle straight into the pelvis in the position that it needs to be in. The birthing ball, we touched on that a wee bit, really important because the way that it helps your pelvis to sit when we're talking about baby position, having the head be on one area that's more uncomfortable than the, than the rest, sitting on the birthing ball can help to open up your pelvis nicely so that baby's got lots of room to maneuver itself into an optimal position to be able to come out the way we want it to. And it's not so much pressure on the lower part of your bottom. So when you sit on there, it's nice and comfy. You can move around. It helps your body be able to move more fluidly because you can just move around on a ball like that, bounce on it, whatever feels good. It just gives you a little bit more freedom of flow. Something that I like to touch on is relieving back pain in labor. How many of you have heard your friends, your family members talk about, oh, I had such terrible back pain in labor or that awful back labor, all the same thing. A lot of times, first babies, all of those joints of the pelvis and the low back, everything has to kind of open a bit and stretch and pull so that baby can get in there and maneuver itself. It's a lot of work for your body to do the first time you have a baby. The other thing that can be causing it is sometimes if the baby's head is in a position we don't want it to be. So normally we want the, head, the, the baby looking that way, looking at your bum. And then the back of the head being at the front or somewhere along this oblique part of your pelvis. Sometimes though, babies get these funny ideas that for some reason they want to watch everything that's going on. So they turn around and they're looking at the front, but then what that does is it puts these bones right here of the baby's head onto the very back of your bones of your pelvis. So if we've got baby sitting around like this, you're gonna feel all this pressure here. There's a few things that you can do, whether it's the baby's head putting this pressure, or if it's just your pelvis stretching and the joints coming a little looser for the first time and having all of that pressure of the head coming down into the pelvis for the first time. One of those things is counter pressure. Well, what's counter pressure? Well, you've got the head. Let's just say this is your back. You've got the baby's head coming down and it's putting pressure on your back, on your lower back there. One of the things that you can do is have your support person put some pressure right there. So you've got pressure this way, put counter pressure on it to help things go back into place where they should be. And that can help to alleviate it. One of the other things is you can just have someone put pressure on your hips here. And that's something called the hip squeeze. I know I'm not demonstrating very well right now, but you can look that up and there's lots of examples. So really good to look it up, review it with whoever's gonna be your support person in labor. Hopefully you don't have back labor, but if you do, you will be well prepared. The other thing that you can do is if you're feeling too uncomfortable to be on your hands and knees or standing and you need to just lay down, you can lay on your side and that hip squeeze that we're talking about, you can just have that support person just do one side and the pressure from the bed will help do the other side. Sometimes that's a little less tiring for everyone involved and then you can get a rest and then they can get a rest too. The other thing that helps with back labor is that TENS machine that I talked about earlier nice deep massage into the lower pelvic area, into the low back. If you do find yourself experiencing back labor, definitely talk to your care provider and your support team and see what other alternatives there may be available to you in order to mitigate this back labor. That's also a really good time to have that conversation about what other alternatives there are available to you in order to mitigate that pain. Last, but definitely not least, think about your breathing while you're in labor. There's a really big difference between 
If you look at my body language, I am very tense and my shoulders are slowly coming up closer and closer to my chin and my ears. That is a very tense, stressful breathing pattern. And that's gonna, as we talked about before, increase the pain sensation that you're having and increase that pain stimuli to your brain. So this is a good part for laboring people and partners alike to hear. When you're breathing, try and find a flow that feels good and that feels natural. <sighs> That's definitely not good and natural. But if you find yourself doing this, either remind yourself or partners, talk to your partner and start helping them remember that they wanna slow down their breathing and they wanna relax their shoulders. They wanna try and relax this tight spot because that you get tense, you feel it right in there. You wanna relax here in your jaw and you get all tight and pursed. You wanna try and remind them to relax their face, relax their jaw, let their shoulders drop down, let their arms drop down. Just talk to them, help them to visualize what they need to be doing in order to help them reduce that painful stimuli and stay focused on helping their bodies to focus on something more than the pain. And a lot of times, just hearing your voice is comforting and soothing and helps them to know what they need to be doing. Mimic the breathing. You can have fast breathing patterns. You can have slow breathing patterns. The fast ones, those ones are gonna cause more stress and more tension. You bring those down to slower breathing patterns. You bring those down to a more moderate pace, reminding them to breathe in and breathe out, sometimes mimicking it, sometimes just hearing someone breathing in and out right here in their ear, over their shoulder, doing it with them will help them to focus on that and forget about this and just be here in this moment instead of here in this moment. That being said, practice. Play around with it. Think about what you would like that would make you feel better while you're in labor. Is it gonna be your favorite jelly beans? Is it gonna be your favorite smelly hand lotion? All these things that we've talked about. Remember to try and focus on enjoying what you can and being very aware of the things that make you not feel good and the things that are going to cause you more stress. Try and focus on the things that are gonna make you feel more at peace and when you reach that point where nothing else is working, talk to your care provider and your support team to see what other options you have available to you in order to get you through that process to the end goal. Because this is a marathon and you can do this. Whatever it is that makes you feel good, you're trying to enjoy this journey as much as you can. And so you want to have as many tools at your disposal to be able to help you do that. Because something might work for a little while or something might work for a long time.